Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, Christian's going to do something uh, a bit different, I think, um, and he's going to be sharing us his uh, coding workflow using Builder, and maybe he's going to come up with some cool stuff here and now. So, go, Christian. Hey, uh, I really don't like planning talks or writing slides, and so Alan did this amazing thing last year where he just like got up on stage and designed in front of people to share kind of like what's inside his head, and I really appreciate that because I'm not a designer and getting to see what they do helps me understand their choices better. So I thought I would try to do something similar this year because that meant I didn't have to do slides or anything else and we could just kind of figure out what we're gonna do here. Uh, so I guess I'll maybe start by kind of going over what Builder is today. And once I start writing code, you'll see all of the things it's missing in hopes that maybe you decide to come write some of the code that we need in it. So anyway, there's a lot to do. Um, but obviously, here's like the greeter screen when you start up Builder. Um, because of tracker performance on source code, we do this kind of nasty thing where we like search through your projects directory and try to find all the projects you have installed. Because it turns out it's faster if we just search the directories than if tracker spins at 100% trying to index your Git directories. So, Someday I would like that to be fixed. If anybody works on Tracker, it would be great if you tried to enable Tracker on your source directory tree and see what happens. For me, I was at like 32 gigs of resident memory, but that's where I ran out of memory. Okay, so I guess we'll just get something started here. Let me focus the proper window, maybe. All right. This is a little stupid program I started a little while ago called RTFM. And okay, I guess a little bit overview here. Traditionally, we have you know your project tree on the side, a couple different things at the bottom that you might, oh man, mice are really a pain. There we go. Uh, I have this obsession with performance. Those that know me for a long time know like, I'm like a recovering car guy. I used to be really into like building engines and all of that. So I, I care about performance. So every time I run my program, I really like to know how much CPU I'm using. I make it, like it helps me realize when I'm doing something really stupid. And uh, I'm on Wayland right now. So you can kind of see one of the inefficiencies we have in drawing on Wayland. Uh, it takes a lot to push this many pixels to the screen. So at some point in time when we get a GL-based GTK, we can move this all to be a shader program. It'll be nice and like take no CPU. But today, it's a little expensive. Uh, terminal for those that care about that. And the funny bug that Rishi will maybe get into upstream VTE someday. Uh, just hide that quick. There we go. Um, oh, also, this is a builder that you probably haven't seen yet. This is on a branch right now. Uh, some of it's in master, and it's what's going to become 3.22. Uh, we've gone through this huge redesign cycle of stuff that uh, Alan kind of showed yesterday. Get rid of that. Uh, at the top here, it's kind of hidden. We have the perspective selector. Uh, what a perspective is in Builder is just kind of like a, like a workspace of sorts. So we have like the editor workspace today. We have the build preferences, which is, um, as you might imagine, how you configure your build, environment variables you might need. Uh, we have the preferences, which is just like everything in Builder that can be tweaked. We try not to go overboard with preferences, but it is an IDE. We do have more than most GNOME programs. Uh, new document here. And this is one of my favorite parts of the new new UI design. This is like our, our Omni bar at the top. You can see the current project, the branch you're on, and a little bit of information about the current build configuration. And as you can imagine, something that might be natural to be here in the future is changing branches, or like maybe committing your current changes, or something like that. Uh, we have a new build button here, which you can click. It builds. It built relatively quick there. If we and then you can like run it as well. It's building, installed. And here's this just little demo program I put together. Uh, it's got kind of a cool new widget here. I'll demo quickly. On the side, we have a bunch of um, categories for geobject introspection libraries. 
and we come in and click on one. We have this fancy new animated widget built on glist. And uh, you can just browse through libraries and stuff. Uh, but additionally, you can search. It's got full text search on the fly. And uh, eventually, this will probably get merged into Builder. But it may take me a month or two to do that. But as you can imagine, anyway, I just sit here and I click through stuff all the time because I think flying widgets in GTK is pretty damn cool. All right. Uh, we also, for those who know me, I used to work on databases, full text engines, stuff like that. Uh, so we have this really fun, fuzzy search here. It's probably like a millisecond to search your source tree. It's, it's pretty quick. We still have more stuff to do there to make this more useful, but um, it's a nice, ooh. There we go. Um, pretty convenient way to open files rather than using the project tree. In fact, most of the time I run just with like the project tree turned off. Um, we have split mode. I mean, I'm a long-term Vim user, so certain things I was unwilling to give up if I was to switch my IDE of choice. So we still have split mode. In fact, you can't really see here, but at the bottom, if you're in Vim mode, you just do control or um, colon and it brings up a command bar, and that's available whether or not you're in Vim mode. And uh, we have a bunch of commands in here, like night hack puts you into the dark mode, and then day hack puts you into the day mode. Um, but there's tab completion on it. Um, let's see here. There we go. Wow. There's all the commands that are available. And it's kind of hooked up into G action. So like any action it can resolve from the widget tree from where you were focused is available on the command line. So whether that, that's like saving or splits or whatever. Uh, you might see some Vim commands in here because I'm in Vim mode. Uh, that'll be familiar with you uh, to the Vim users here. And we try to be somewhat compatible as much as we can. Uh, let's see. Like WC closes, as you might expect. Um, let's see here. Anything useful? Oh, the thing I'm working on right now is a lot of people have found that it's really difficult to create G objects. I did a video last December, or so on like how to how to build G objects for people that were un unfamiliar with that. But we've made it pretty quick. You can just come in here and say I have like a foo bar. You know, I want it to be derivable. And we'll add a property, it's called testing, it's a string, readable, writable, whether or not it's construct, and we'll just go, obviously this is on a branch, it's not finished, but, um, you know, it creates your G object for you, that type of stuff, right? So, ooh. Um, all the difficult stuff of, of making that is there. What else can we demo? Build preferences. Uh, so obviously, flat packs a big thing for us. Uh, we we want to make it easy for you to create flat packs. So in your build configuration, if you want to target a particular flat pack version, uh, they're just here. We could probably name this better, but you know I have the SDK for 3.20 installed. So you just select that, and now when it goes to build, instead of building on the host system, it'll be building inside of a flat pack uh, container. So anything that's available in the runtime is there. Set environment variables if you need to. Uh, we also support JH build because for those that aren't on Flatpak yet, it's somewhat useful. Uh, we have preferences here. It's, wow, that's terrible. Um, let me do this. Uh, the preferences are searchable. I know that's been pretty useful for some people to be able to find things. We have a snippet system, Vim, Emacs, and then our default builder mode, which is basically gedit for keyboard bindings. Oh, that showed up on the wrong window. Nope. All right, Wayland people, I have a bug. Who's working on Wayland? I'm dragging a window from the other screen and it's moving this window. Yeah. 
<laughs> so I think I think what the problem is is the uh, the shortcuts window that I want to show you is too tall for this resolution, so it's on the other screen. But uh, I'm sure you've seen the new keyboard uh, shortcuts window in the various GNOME apps. Uh, we did that for Builder uh, two cycles ago, I think, and Matthias moved it into GTK. So the stuff we were using to make it easy for you to find all our like tips and tricks, uh, you should be able to use in any application now. I think it's uh, control question mark or control F2 or something like that to activate. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so there's a bunch of stuff that isn't in Builder yet, but I've been going through and like laying the groundwork to be able to do. So that's like adding, uh, like we want something like Glade, like a UI designer in it, obviously, right? We're writing GNOME desktop applications here, so having a designer would be useful. Uh, one of the other ones that was really important to me uh, this last cycle, after 3.20 came out, I had a couple weeks of a down period, so I went and rewrote sysprof. And has anybody here used sysprof yet? It's a really cool program. Uh, it's a profiler. It was written by someone uh, from our past originally, Soren Sandman, and then Christian Hoaxberg, and a bunch of other people in here have, have contributed to that project. Uh, but it hasn't really been touched since, I guess technically in 2012, it was ported to the Linux kernel's uh, perf uh, subsystem. But other than that, it hadn't been touched since like 2006. And that meant if you wanted to profile your system, you had to run the UI as root. And I'm really against running any sort of applications as root unless you really, really have to. So I wanted to break it out into a process separation. I wanted to turn it into a library the way Glade is a library as well as an application uh, so that we can embed it in Builder. So I'm going to use this as an opportunity to use tooltips. And why that doesn't show up on the right screen is beyond me. Try to shrink this. Uh -huh. All right, so this is what sysprof looks like now. It's pretty simple. You can select the processes you want to profile. Uh, if you just turn off entire system, you get a list of the processes that are running on your system. And what's something that's interesting? We'll like profile software. So all you have to do is hit record. We'll prompt you via pull kit to get authentication because we need to open up the perf event stream as capsys admin or root. So we get a nice profiling session. I'll run software quick. Oh, it showed up on the other screen. That's why it's not there. You know, we'll exercise the program a little bit, click through some stuff. Wow. Now I can't see it. You know, just come through here, exercise part of the program you want to use, and then stop. So, if you haven't used a profiler before, this can be kind of daunting. But sysprof is split up into three parts. On the top left, we have all of the functions that were recorded by the profiler. On the right, we have all of the descendants of that function. And then on the bottom left, when we, when we click on something, we can see all of the different functions that, that um, called it, actually. Yeah. Do this here. So here's all of the functions that were profiled that called a particular uh, instruction pointer. And this can be really useful just to go through and find performance bugs in GTK. Like if you find something in your app is slow and you want to know why, this is pretty much all you have to do. What I just did here, and it'll be pretty obvious. So we'll come in, we see GNOME software. If you built from JH build instead of seeing like we were somewhere in this file, what that means is like we don't have debug symbols. So if you use JH build, you'll have debug symbols. Or like a flat pack SDK or something, you'll have debug symbols. So uh, you know, you can just dive in and see what happens. When you see something like kernel, that means there was an interrupt of some sort, 
or a transition, syscall transition into the kernel. So those are useful to know, like if that's the most important thing you're doing or the highest costing thing you're doing, a lot of things could happen there. We could have uh, had a scheduler transition. We could have actually called like a syscall. That generally, if you call a syscall, you'll see something like syswrite or something first. So um, this is how we go about trying to make sure that GTK is super fast, Mutter is super fast. We use it to find various performance bugs in the shell. I have an extension for this that also does GJS profiling. So we can have like a real JavaScript profiler, which is useful for the GNOME shell. But I still need to get that merged into GJS. So if you're a maintainer of that and you're here, we should talk. Uh, the goal for this is to get people that are writing GJS applications in GNOME, like um, Polari is like a perfect example. We want them to be able to have profiling to, uh, too. So if you maybe work on Python or write a Python app and you're familiar with the Python profiling API, it would be really cool if we could get that in here so that we have profiling that's useful for C, for Vala, for C++, for Python, and for GJS. I think that covers probably a majority of the software that we're writing today. Uh, but if you have another language, it's pretty easy to hook up the profiling machinery. All right, so we have about 25 minutes. I would like to leave an, some time for questions. So where's the mouse? Just to give an idea, what should we write? Who has an idea? Come on, someone has to have an idea. Video editor? <laughs> What's a, what's a good prefix for this? Blender? <laughs> Any other ideas? <laughs> what? Guadic app, okay, cool. Call that what, G app? <laughs> Application? <laughs> okay, um, cool, and we'll do it in C. Okay, so this kind of just goes over the templates and stuff we have here. And we don't have a lot yet because we just kind of landed this this last cycle. But uh, the most important things are here. We tried to really condense what you're likely to need being part of the GNOME ecosystem. Like you don't see we have like a list of version control selection. Like do you want Subversion or Bazaar or whatever? Because GNOME is about community and our community has chosen Git. So that's the type of UI selections that we're going to be catering for. So whether or not you want version control, default to on, it uses Git. I default to GPLv3, that's my personal choice. Uh, you know, the tyranny of the author. And uh, a couple language selection. We'll have more, as we get more uh, templates, if you are interested in working on templates, let me know. Um, but today we have a couple. I actually have not used this template yet at all. It was pushed by Matthew Leeds, who is a Red Hat intern this week. So we'll see what happens. And we'll just create that. Oops. OK. So if we're making a new application, we might, sorry, one more nitpick. Uh, Menu positioning is off. There's another Wayland bug. So, you know, if you want to work on that. <laughs> this one's great, though. <laughs> uh, it's all the way over here. You know, we might have Guadic application, because we're going to start with that. You know, I like using GPL, so we'll do that. It's a G object, GTK application. And we'll include the GTK header here. So for any of you that have made G-objects before, that's probably a lot faster than making your g object. <laughs> and we need a new, a new application here, GPL as well. It's a G-object, and it's a GTK type application. Again, pretty much there. Because uh, this is C, we'll just, doesn't like empty structs, or we can just get rid of that altogether. All right. We don't really need properties. We can just get rid of that. 
it's a Guadic application or .gnome .guadic. Oops. And whatever. Okay. We don't really have properties in the application, so we can get rid of that. And get rid of that. There we go. So here's the first thing that we should probably do for you that we don't do today. We don't actually add. Oops. We don't actually add the files to your project. So we need some plumbing for this. It's really a pain in auto tools. It will be a lot easier if Mason provides us the stuff we need to do that. So OK, we do that. If I change here, you'll see for a minute it was spinning down here. And that's because it was re-indexing things for us. We'll do a build. I like to do colon build instead of clicking on the UI. That's something else you can do. Here's another thing that AutoTool sucks at, AutoGen. Oh, we just kind of wait for that. Yeah, yeah, we could. We could probably even walk next door and get espresso. Uh, another fun thing. We'll probably need a Guadec Woo. spell check. Window, same sort of deal. It's a G object. It's a GTK application window. And GTK again. And we need a C file for it. About this time, you might realize that like maybe we could do a language other than C. GTK. Which thing? Oh, with the red, the red squiggle or at the top? Oh, the red squiggle. So that's because we haven't included the file into the make file yet. So we don't know how to get C flags. So what's going on in the background here is we're, we're parsing with Clang uh, your source tree. And to invoke the uh, Clang command line correctly, well, we, we use the library, but essentially the same thing. To invoke like Clang or GCC correctly, we need the C flags to be able to get the proper includes. So until we have that in the build system, we don't have a way to extract and know what that is. So like once we add it to the makefile.am and we've done a build, then we can, we can discover it. Compilation database. Uh, I don't plan to support anything in Clang that I can't do through the library. The, so the reason why I don't want to do that is that, one, I don't want to be dependent on Clang. I would actually like to drop Clang in favor of GCC as the GCC tools uh, team adds the features I need. And also, that's, that means that our abstraction has to go and look at our build system and then go do that for Clang, when instead, like we already have the abstraction, right? So the build system abstraction for us says, hey, go get the C flags for this particular target. And the build system's responsibility is to return us what it would use to compile that, that file. Yeah. Yeah, so if someone wants to go write that for auto tools, we can do that. But today, we have the plumbing for it. It's build system agnostic, whatever build system plugs in just needs to give us that. So if we're, we're integrating with other tools, maybe it would be useful. But I don't think it would immediately give us any feature we don't have today. We have a GTK type window. Oop, and I can't spell. And All right, let me do one more thing. Okay. 
Uh, that's another helpful one if you do PR expands to the private, gets it from like the current. So it might be like G object new, GTK type header bar. So it's goal true. All right, build. Oh, wait, we need to add that to the make file. Build that. Go back. Okay. Build failed. All right. Well, we also have this over here extracting the build failures. Okay. Oop. Haha. <laughs> you know what? Let's let's actually get rid of that. Let's see what happens here. I should be able to just right click. Go to definition. Oh. So normally Clang would give us a fix it and we would actually be able to do that from a menu, but you know, it's pretty easy to insert a comma. And then we can click up here for the next error. Okay, we're not using this in the function. And no more in there. Oops. And then switch to the window. No errors here. Private. Go to the next. Aha. Uh -huh. The next. Self bar. Ah. Oh. Fifth bar. Obviously, this is really time consuming, right? We have a GTK application. We want to Isn't this boring? Why do we do this all day? Do you like the animations where it like, <laughs> that's not like I entertain myself during the day. <laughs> and I also like how I'm programming on like a third, if less than the screen size. You know, we'll just do a, um, Oh, wait. Ah, we're forgetting to include. Wouldn't it be great if it could automatically include that file for you? We should teach it to do that. Now let's see if this works. I don't know if it will. Haha, -ha, it does. So we can actually just hit run. And despite the fact that we're using auto tools, which is kind of painful, uh, most of this stuff just works. But when I close this, I forgot to, oh wait, no, I'm using application. So yeah, it just works. Go ahead and run it again. Uh, I did decide to go with a particular route here where it, we force installing the application when you run it because a pet peeve of mine is running out of tree, despite the fact that I do that still. Um, when you run out of tree, you're never testing the application as the user's running it. So that seems like a really bad idea, right? One second. Uh, so we do install it, whether or not you're in Flatpak or on the host system, and then uh, we run from the like installed state.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. We should fix that. Did you file a bug? Will, will you file one right now? Do you have Wi-Fi? Do you need to log in? Do you need some credentials? <laughs> No, I mean, that's an absolutely great purpose. And like, obviously, there's a lot to do. And I just missed it. So we should add that. Um, I mean, we could do this. I mean, I could do this all day. I do. So I'll probably just maybe like stop and allow you to ask questions, things you want, feature requests. This is a good time while you have me as a captive audience. There's got to be questions. I don't believe you. Piling on that, it would be cool if you got the uh, new structured logging into some kind of output where you can look at it, like a debug do you think, log. Do you think you would want that as like what, like a tree view of log lines, or I mean, because if we get the structured logging and we just make sure that we properly colorize the output, would it would that be the same? Like, would you want it as like a big text view or like a tree no? View? I would. I wouldn't. Uh, the source file information to actually be able to click where did this log message oh, come from. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. And also, like, it has all this extra information that you don't want to show on an overview of the log elements. But if you click on it, it could show you the line or whatever. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. extra information. Another thing we could do... Like, with this I, I want to actually have an easy way to dump uh, a Cairo surface, for instance, into the log, and then you could just show it in line. Like, oh, that's This is how my brilliant. thing looked at this point. Okay, yeah, so that might be cool because we, if we integrate that with the debugger visualizers, which hopefully we can get a debugger in in the next maybe like 3.24. Um, the idea is with, with debugger visualizers is that you can like hover over a variable while you're debugging and you can see the state of the variable. Nemover does this. Uh, what we don't have yet is when you hover over a variable that's say a Cairo surface, like show us the content of that surface. So the visualizer support we put into there maybe could even be shared with um, structured logging. And it would definitely be nice to be able to click on the log line and, or the, the log entry and, and go to the, the file position and maybe even put bullet points on the side next to um, line numbers of like how much code is hit when we're doing profiling. Or even get a log of the draw hierarchy when you're drawing on the widgets and have like a snapshot of what did this widget draw this, mm -hmm. this like get all the layers that brings up so one thing i want to do uh let my goal for the boff if anyone's going to be here for the boff days my goal is to integrate sysprof into builder so when you hit run there'll be like a an option to like profile uh and something we don't have but the plumbing is in place for is if you've used osx's instruments or mac os's instruments uh, they have like visualizations of data you've collected. So we'll put that at the top of this. And since we already have the call graph data, uh, we want to teach GTK to output like frame timing data. And now that we have GL, like maybe we can get GL trace data in there as well so that you could like select a region and see what functions were called in that time period, what uh, GPU calls, what the state looked like, and whether or not we missed a GTK frame in an animation. Um, and hopefully have all of that together so when you're writing an app, you can see what you're doing is causing a, a stall. Uh, yeah, one question. So you have the um, search for file names, right? Uh, are you planning on having anything for variables? Or in my case, like CSS classes or yeah, I mean, things like, I, like content of the, yeah. the files? Again, like the plumbing is in place to be able to do that, but the individual search providers aren't there yet. Um, I think in Qt Creator they do, they have like little shortcut prefixes, so you can do like C space a class name, S space a symbol name, and it'll like jump to the symbol. Uh, we can certainly do something like that as we start indexing more project data. But classes are not something I thought about, or uh, CSS classes were not something I thought about, so that might be kind of cool. Also HTML tags. <laughs> While I'm at that, yeah. <laughs> Oh, by the way, for HTML, did you notice that we have HTML5 autocompletion? And you can autocomplete CSS inside. Like if you do like a div with a style equals or whatever, we can autocomplete CSS inside the style tag of the HTML document. Yeah. Sean? What about um, 
visual GUI layout, like Glade, like functionality? Is that something that's... So I'm fairly slow about including things into Builder. And I like Glade, but it has a couple things that are preventing it from being really useful in this IDE sense. One thing that's missing from Glade is strong support for templates. Uh, so like when you subclass a GTK widget is uh, what we call templates. And what makes that incredibly difficult to implement in the Glade uh, project is you might be inheriting from another object which is also defined in your project. So this gets into some like weird state where we have to introspect into a lot of stuff of your library which may not be compiled yet and try to discover like what the hierarchy chain is so that we can show you the right thing in the, in the UI. Uh, as we get that supported, then all of a sudden it makes a lot more sense for us to have it included inside of Builder. Um, we should probably focus a hackfest on that because it's a lot of work and we don't have anyone full-time on Glade. Another option might be to wait for GSK to land in GTK because it's my opinion that writing a UI designer as a canvas is significantly easier than writing a UI designer as a widget hierarchy where you have to instantiate the widgets in which you're editing. Because if you're instantiating widgets, that means you have to have the library compiled, which means we're running the user's project code in the application that we're trying to use. Now, I'm sure all of you have had bugs while writing your code. And the last thing you want to have happen is Glade crash because it's activating your widget, which is now actually running. So it, it gets a little bit complex. And we need to kind of decide where we want to go forward. And I don't want to make that decision until we have a canvas that makes it convenient to do scene graph type stuff, which is useful in a designer. Other questions? Pet projects you want integrated? Tell me why you're not using Builder today. Who's using Builder? We don't track you, so I don't know how many people are using Builder or like what files you have open. So if you ever feel like sending me that data, it's useful. I can tell you why I'm not using Builder. Um, I like it, and it works pretty well with Valano, and I'm really looking for Vala IDE but it's not covering my workflow. And the um, main thing is that uh, I can't control, com uh, control enter for completion. Okay, yeah, so... But, uh, but I already discussed that on IRC, that's complex. Yeah, so. the, the difficulty, the reason why we don't enter... Control space should at least bring up the, the completion list, but the reason we don't use enter to complete the item today, it's tab like you're used to on a command line shell. And the reason for that is simply technical, the word completion engine in GTK source view is hyperactive and it will activate words while you're typing in comment blocks. So if you're typing a comment and you hit enter to go to the next line and it starts expanding like a G object or something, right? Like in your comment. So it's, it's frustrating that enter's not there, but trust me, it's even more frustrating when it activates prematurely. Uh, so we just need to go fix that in GTK source view. And if someone has time to work on that, I'll guide you through it. Uh, nope, um, I haven't used Builder, but it looks really slick and I'm gonna have to try it out. But uh, one of the most useful things that I have in other IDEs, and I'm told it's not in, uh, builder yet is a, a tab on a function where you can right click it and say find all colors of this function and especially if you're doing C++ which some people are don't have and there are lots of functions with the same name mm -hmm. but they bind to different objects and and this is like a lifesaver when you have like so where is this actually being called so this okay. sort of functionality would be really cool okay yeah that's a good idea um, I've done some work started on this uh, it's not in Builder yet, but I, I briefly showed RTFM, which is just a prototype name. I don't expect to call it that. But uh, 
One of the things I wanted to do with it when you're viewing G-Object introspection documentation is be able to show you practical examples of where APIs are being used. So I wrote a program that parses the output from GNOME continuous and gets all the C flags and Vala flags and all of that type of stuff so we can go open files in GNOME Git, index them, and say, where was everybody, where, show me every program in GNOME's Git that calls this function. So that when we're working on GTK and we want to deprecate something, we can go get a list of all the different places, we, all the software we have to go fix that uses the deprecated function. Uh, but I think we could use that same infrastructure locally on the project so that we go index your project and actually build it with Clang and get the AST and everything in the background. And then we'll have like a list of, uh, they call them like call refs, I think, in Clang parlance. Um, be able to show you a list. But yeah, that's a really good idea. If you could file a bug for that, that would help me track it. Uh, okay, you were asking about pet projects. Uh, so you had a, a split. Uh, do you do melt style diff viewing? We don't yet, mm. and it would be great if we could reuse meld for that, and I think that's possible. I mean, it's not the most beautiful diff viewer, but it's written, mm. and it's like part of our community, and we support Python plugins, and it's written in Python. So I don't think it's a terrible amount of work to do. What we may want instead, though, is the Git G guys, like Nacho and, and Paolo, have been um, working on, oh, and Jesse, VDK, have been working on Git G, and they have a diff viewer that's really similar to like the GitHub diff viewer. Um, so maybe we'll go that route rather than a side by side. I don't know what's more useful for people. Maybe we want both. If there are no other questions, thank you very much, Christian. Thank you.